BioBalance HealthCast episode 225, Testosterone Replacement for Women. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Almost a year ago, we published our book, The Secret Female Hormone. And about a month after the book was published, Kathy got an invitation uh, to come and speak to the Age Management Medicine Group, which was an international conference being held in Orlando, Florida. And they asked her to give a presentation on what she does and why she does it. And so what we thought we'd do in this week's podcast is, is go through parts of that presentation because it was provided as information for physicians and nurse practitioners who are on the cutting edge of uh, edge of medicine. And so there was a lot of uh, technical information in it, but we want to break that down and talk to you about what hormone replacement is all about, why it's being done, why it's helpful. So we're going to start with the introduction that Kathy gave to the conference, and then we'll have her talk about why she chose to begin the way she did. I um, had my ovaries out because of endometriosis, and that was back in 2002. And it was a devastating thing because when I woke up, I wasn't myself. And that had a lot to do with not having any hormones at all. I have terrible problems with even getting out of bed, no motivation. I gained 20 pounds in a month. Um, I didn't think the same. My mental capacity was bad. So I have gone to everyone in our area. and They they called me lazy, fat, crazy. Um, I was sent to psychiatrists, just, and now I have patients that tell me the same thing, the same rigmarole. They, I didn't find anybody who was doing testosterone treatment or even estrogen in a bioidentical fashion that worked back in 2002. My talk obviously was about testosterone and not just hormone replacement because our book is about testosterone, the secret female hormone. So the people at this conference wanted to know about why it was so important, how to treat patients, and they needed my story, obviously, to um, to have them identify with me both as a physician and a patient. And a woman. And a woman. But who, who receives testosterone. Right. Because testosterone is still primarily thought of as a male hormone. And there are many lectures at these conferences mm-hmm. about testosterone in men. Right. But there are not that many women who have gone through this who also are talking about testosterone for women. So this organization wanted some balancing information about women uh, to to add to the value of the conference. Importance of testosterone for women. And that's what it was called. Okay. So so you described in the video uh, and in your speech how badly your system was malfunctioning Mm -hmm. and how your life as you had lived it was collapsing around you. Mm -hmm. And nobody offered any help, nobody had any ideas until you found this treatment. And then you you go on to say, miraculously, almost immediately, you were better. And I was. I was better so fast. But people without ovaries feel better really fast because they are miserable. So I slept for the first time in years that first night of after having the pellets and I thought it was going to be that was like that must be placebo effect but I've been sleeping ever since and before that I had terrible migraines I couldn't go to work they carried me out every every week I'd go out a couple times they'd have to cancel patients that's a horrible thing for a physician and I was on call as well then AMMG is a is a international group of doctors I, I think it's over 10,000 doctors all over the world who do age management medicine. And so when I was talking to these doctors, some of them were there for the first time. Mm-hmm. And they're there for what's new in medicine. What, how can we take care of patients better? How can we treat their symptoms? So when I was giving them the list of symptoms and descriptions, that was familiar to them, but they may never have thought of it as a woman's illness and what I was my purpose was to give them the list of symptoms and when they hear it say oh that could be low testosterone instead of 
instead of saying, oh, that could be depression. and, and, and Or you're just getting old. Or that's, you're just getting that's old. That's a part and, of getting old. Yeah, like they told me, you're lazy, yeah. fat, and crazy. Mm -hmm. So just get used to it and uh, enjoy the rest of your 50 years that you're probably going to live. <laughs> so, so one of the underlying concepts then of age management medicine has to do with the fact that we're living longer than we ever have before. More and more and mm -hmm. more of us Absolutely. are living longer lives. And medicine isn't used to that. Uh, mm -hmm. People aren't used to that. And so we don't know what to expect. What is normal aging? And what is good interventional medicine that will retain quality of life? So mm -hmm. that, that as you were describing in the er earlier part, uh, how debilitating aging was becoming for you as your system stopped producing the hormones that it had always produced mm -hmm. and the impact of that on your life. The, the question becomes, can we treat that? Can we reverse that? Can we manage our lives in a way to avoid it? And that's what these doctors are focused on as a group to try to find ways to do that successfully. Specifically, how do you live a longer health span yes. with a very short sick, sick part before you die. Yeah. We're not stopping people from dying necessarily, and that's not the point. The point is quality of life. Well, yeah, there's some studies out there that show that almost two-thirds of the total dollar spent on health care in your lifetime happened in the last six months of your life. And I, I, I contend that it would be a lot less money if we were healthier all the way to that point. Yes. And that the, if that span of disease well, not wasn't only, big, not only less it was money, a short, less misery. Let's, let's you know, pain. It, 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 we all know old people that we watch them like hobble through the airport because they can't walk. I know or that was follow them up or down a flight of stairs or into an elevator or at a restaurant or even when they're driving because mm -hmm. their reflexes and awareness is just more limited than it once was. And for those of us who aren't suffering so much from that yet, that's, that's irritating and frustrating. Like, it's also scary because you, <laughs> you say, see it coming. You say that could be happening to me. Yes. So the whole point is let's. Let's not let this happen to us. And if it, when it does, and if it does, it'll be a very short period of time. So, so in terms of your miracle, the replacement of testosterone mm -hmm. for you, a woman getting testosterone, what are the functions of testosterone? You were saying in, in the clip that it's the same for men as it is for women, but let, let's review what those functions are. What, what does uh, testosterone have to do with sex drive and orgasm? Well. It is actually sex drive and orgasm are actually horma, hormonal. If you don't have, if you don't have testosterone in general, most most people, and we're talking about the majority of the population, are not going to have orgasms and they're not going to desire sex. They won't even be accepting of it. So, I mean, so that's not driven by love and romance. I, I, I actually, love my wife. Honestly, I care for my wife, but if I don't have a certain level of hormones, my body's not going to go. Oh, hello. Right. That's right. Absolutely. You can love somebody, but not love them sexually. Uh -huh. But marriage is a sexual relationship. That's 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 the one thing it that makes culture. it yeah. different in our culture than any other friendship. Mm -hmm. So that is key to relationships. It is. We know it is for men. And now we need to accept the reality that it is for women as well. So restful sleep. I remember before my wife started receiving testosterone replacements that she would wake up in the middle of the night just in a, in a sweat. I mean, the, the sheets would be wet. She would be wet. Her hair would be wet. And she would be mad. I mean, she, and she'd <laughs> like glare at me and it'd be like, it's all your it's fault. It's so hot, you know. <laughs> and, and we'd fight over the temperature in the room. You know, we're going to run the fans. We're going to turn the air conditioner mm -hmm. colder. And, and this was an every night occasion for several years. Well, there, so she didn't sleep well. No. No, and I didn't either. Um, and I'd always slept well my whole life. I mean, I could I could sit against that wall over there and just wait for a surgery, cross my arms over, go to sleep for 15 minutes while they were getting the room ready for a surgery. I'm sitting on the floor sleeping. Yeah. I mean, you I could sleep anywhere. Medical, yeah, you yeah. have to. Otherwise, you don't sleep. Get you to run sleep those at long all. Sessions as a resident. So it was necessary for me to sleep. Yeah. Anywhere so that I could actually catch enough to do the next day. Yeah. Soldiers do the same thing. I didn't know that. Yeah, they learn. And you have to sleep wherever you can. But sleep is not just, sleep disturbance is not just the hot flashes because I had this long before menopause. Okay. I had this during my early 40s when my testosterone dropped because there's two things that wake women up as they get between 40 and 55, and that's um, testosterone loss, which causes you to wake up because you can't get into the last couple stages of sleep. So you go one, two, wake up, no three, four, one, two. There's some controversy. You may go two, one. 
yeah. to one, but but you don't get you into don't get the last into stages, deep, sleep. deep deep stages of sleep, so you don't feel rested. Yeah. The other is hot flashes, which is usually estrogen loss or and or testosterone loss that can give you the flashes. That's what uh, Phyllis was experiencing. Oh, I told her I thought it was just a guilty conscience, but she swore it wasn't. And that just makes us matter. <laughs> <laughs> That's not helpful. <laughs> that is not we, we helpful. We offer those non-medical yeah. interpretations. All right. Uh, what about immune functions? Does testosterone have anything to do with helping protect you from getting That's different why we illnesses? Get, yeah, when we lose our testosterone, we lose our protection from our T cells, which are the ones that gobble up cancer cells. So after testosterone drops, it increases our uh, rates of cancer. It increases our rates of um, having life-threatening pneumonia. I mean, why why would people have immunization after 65 for pneumovax or a pneumonia vaccine, but right. not our whole lives? Because our immune system stinks after we're in our 60s. We probably should get it a little earlier if we're not taking testosterone. Uh -huh. But with testosterone, we can fight off all of these things, viruses and bacteria, as well as cancer. So testosterone stimulates the immune system, more T cells, and they're more active. So, so And also more B cells, which make the immunoglobulins that uh, kill off bacteria and viruses. So w watching the news and reading some of the mass media publications that are out there, I find articles all the time that talk about be careful about hormone replacement because there's an additional <laughs> risk of various kinds of cancers, prostate cancer, breast cancer, uh, ovarian cancer. Uh, what's the scoop on that? Is, is there really an increased risk if you get testosterone replaced? No, actually. Actually, your risk. The your, simple, the simple, the simple answer, answer is no. Is no. Uh, testosterone decreases your risk of cancers. Now, there is a belief that prostate cancer is caused by mm -hmm. high testosterone or testosterone lev high levels. However, it's been proven that men have who have low testosterone levels, right, or have dropped their testosterone levels. That that's when they begin the cancers. Mm -hmm. Now, you may get replacement after that, but it, it, that's not what caused it. Mm -hmm. So it is the low testosterone that begins the pro process. For prostate for men. For what prostate. about breast cancer and ovarian breast cancer? Breast cancer is not related in... I mean, it has not even been related to testosterone. It's, it is actually uh, given to patients who have breast cancer to help them fight the cancer cells. And there are several studies. I have the references in our book about that. Okay. So it, it improves that. It also improves immune, autoimmune diseases. So um, that's, that's one of the um, ways that, and one of the reasons I have so many patients that come in with autoimmune disorders because testosterone modifies the system. It doesn't just elevate it, it, it modulates it and it modulates. makes it work normally. Which brings me to another question or issue that's real personal and it has to do with my wife again. Uh, bone function as you age. And bones begin to deteriorate, you get osteopenia and osteoporosis mm -hmm. and, and you shrink and you get bowed over and you're, you're, you're brittle and fragile. And that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons that old people fall and break something. Mm -hmm. Then they get pneumonia and die. Mm -hmm. You can fall a lot if your bones are thick and not break anything. But you'll break something if your bones are brittle. If you so fall. how do we avoid brittle bones? Uh, how do we avoid that deterioration process in our bone structure if, if we can? Well, you have to, you always have to have the, the vitamin D and calcium to actually build a bone. But beyond that, why do we get osteoporosis? We get osteoporosis because we have low estrogen and low testosterone levels, and men will get it as well, mm -hmm. um, especially if they've taken corticosteroids throughout their life. That increases the loss of bone. So what's a corticosteroid? It's like prednisone or any kind of steroid, not testosterone, but any other kind of steroid from the adrenal gland. To, to bulk up for uh, working out yeah. kind of thing? Athletes? It, yes. They can, so they, they're going to be more susceptible. Yes. But uh, unless they had testosterone as well. Now, testosterone helps build bone. So as, as testosterone drops, bone loss occurs. So we, as we age, and if we don't replace our testosterone and our estrogen for women, then our bones get thinner and thinner. And, and Phyllis was the perfect example that two years after pellets, yeah, actually, yes. That she, her, her bones were back to normal. Her and gynecologist been was so surprised because he had her, he, he said, you've got a degenerative bone condition in your family. He he, he treated both my wife, her sister, her mom, and mm -hmm. and uh, so your family has this problem, women in it. And so you're going to get more brittle. You're going to, as a matter of fact, you already have uh, osteopenia. 
mm-hmm. and you're almost to the borderline of osteoporosis. Mm-hmm. I mean, just marginal difference. So she's been on this treatment for two years, and he hasn't had anything to say about it. He just smiles at her and goes, oh, you're still doing that. So then <laughs> last month she went in and had her bone density mm-hmm. test, and she is back in the normal range. I mean, it's restorative power really surprised him. But and, all and these other said, symptoms are gone, too. What are you too. doing again? <laughs> yeah. But all these other symptoms are yes, gone, too. Yes, he didn't ask than, her that when all no, the symptoms were gone, which is, is a, that's why I was trying to bring, heighten the awareness of this group of symptoms. I'm just going to, just to be, um, to be concise and have the whole list together, uh-huh. testosterone uh, actually helps energy decreases your risk of diabetes, decreases, of course, the cancers. It also stimulates your metabolism Uh so that you can make muscle, burn fat, become leaner, get your waistline back. That's what I was talking about there. The bladder is very sensitive to testosterone, and people who have bladder issues, they come in and they say, well, I have urine loss all the time. It could be that well, your bladder's When swollen. they cough or when they sneeze. Right. And, and then as they get older, they have problems regulating the flow. To, to make right. it happen. Or, and, and there are other things that people say, oh, well, that's for men, your prostate. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you're having problems with that. Uh, but I mean, it depends is a huge oh, cash cow. I know, and I'd, I'd love to shut that down. <laughs> but, but most women who come to see me mm-hmm. who have urine loss that didn't start with their last child, that started yeah. as they aged, not just because if it started with your last child and you had a difficult delivery, it could be literally fall, falling down. Right. But if it didn't, if it's not that bad, testosterone can tighten up. Mm-hmm. It, it builds collagen. It tightens up all the support structures, and it thickens the lining of the urethra, so you don't just lose urine all the time. Okay. So it it makes you young again. Uh, in your bo- your bottom becomes young again, basically, and your bladder is part of the structures that are in your pelvis with your uterus and ovaries. So the bladder becomes young again as well, and you don't have as much risk as a woman with urine loss. Now, for men, most of the men that I've treated over time, they they initially get a slight enlargement, more enlargement, or a slight enlargement mm-hmm. of the prostate at mm-hmm. first. And then, after about six months to a year, the prostate starts shrinking. So then they pass urine easier. Mm-hmm. It's not generally, if, if there's no scarring, it's not generally something that continues. It's awesome. I mean, it is an, it would put so many different business, businesses, sorry, that um, nursing homes, uh, Depends. I mean, it's not going to change a hearing aid or a glass or eyesight. Right. Uh, but it. It's but some of the ancillary products for age the elderly. <laughs> that none of us look forward to. No. This testosterone works for women as well as men. So in this way. So then let's talk about the mechanism of action. Uh, how, mm-hmm. how does it work? I mean, <laughs> you can make all of these claims, but some people are, mm-hmm. are curious to say, well, right. how does that work? You know, mm-hmm. why, why doesn't something else? For instance, they, they have a medicine that you can take uh, to help you urinate more comfortably if you have an enlarged prostate. Mm-hmm. They have medicines that women can take to, or and men, to resist uh, bone uh, density issues. Mm-hmm. But those come with side effects. Mm-hmm. That are sometimes pretty debilitating, and, and, people and the are, bone isn't. Fosamax doesn't make really thick bone; it just looks good on X-ray. So, I mean, it's really not making you sturdier. It just looks better when you X-ray it. So, it makes your bones more photogenic. <laughs> yeah, really, really, but <laughs> that's, really nice looking. But bone. that's the way they t- they judge right. meds medicines for osteoporosis. But in reality, testosterone makes the thickest, best bones. So in general. Boys, men have thicker bones when they start out with because they've got ten times the testosterone as women. So, so at the conference, you talked a little bit about the mechanism of action for mm-hmm. testosterone replacement. Mm-hmm. So, let's take a look at that clip. The mechanism of action depends on on the tissue, it depends on the um, <clears throat> androgen receptor, and it depends on how it turns the tissue on. So. The mechanism mechanism of action is a- anabolic activity. We know that everybody who's female knows that we make more muscle when we have our testosterone, and as we get older, we don't have as defined muscles, and we get more fat in the muscles, like marbling in a steak. It's lovely. Then uh, it's a vasodilator, so that's why it helps men have erections and have helps us prepare for sex by swelling. Um, it's an immune stimulator, which is great because as we get older, our immune system tanks. And so this is something to help your immune system come back. 
That's why we give testosterone to AIDS patients, because it stimulates their immune system so that they can fight cancers. It's not because we want to make them happy. It's because we, we are trying to make them not get an, yet another problem as a cancer. So for us, aging, our immune system is going down. Why don't we bump it up a little bit? And this is one of the good things testosterone does for us. Bone growth. All these drugs that we have for bones, it's not making good bone. We've had lots of lectures about this in the past. Give testosterone instead of all of those medicines. They're expensive. They don't make strong bone. They make brittle bone. And people still break their hip. It's, it's useless. It looks great on x-ray. That's it. So we're treating the x-ray. So instead, if you replace testosterone and or estrogen in women, you can build great bone. And that's much more important than saying, oh, yeah, I gave this woman Fosamax to your drug rep. We've covered a lot of ground today, and, and it's time to wrap this up. But we're going to come back next week and talk more about your presentation. There's so much more information that you presented, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it was really well received. And, I could and have talked for three hours, which is you a could problem have. if you're, or more, you know, if, yeah. you're, if you've got. Well, but you minutes. had a whole cluster of people that, that approached you after your speech, and you, you were at more than a half hour getting out of the room. At you know, least, yeah. And so there are a lot of physicians out there mm -hmm. who don't have this information. It's one of the reasons we do podcasts. What we encourage you to do is get a copy of our book or take our podcast, send the link of our podcast to your doctor when you have one of these concerns and they don't seem to know what to do with it. And ask them, you know, could you consider this? Is this information that you could verify, that you could look up, or that you dismiss? And some doctors are not going to be responsive to that because truly their jobs are, are overwhelming in terms of time demands. Mm -hmm. But some may be open to it, and it's worth asking. So thank you for listening, and come back next time to hear more about the way testosterone can make you better and make you age better. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.